I'm Mort Coop, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. In studio with me is a young lady who has a nodule on the vocal cords, which is quite prevalent in this country. We commit voice suicide. I coined that term years ago, and I wrote a book called uh, Stop Committing Voice Suicide. Do you have trouble with your voice? Do you sound like this? Do you sound like that? Has your doctor told you you need surgery for your vocal cord growth? Here's a young lady telling her story about her nodule, and we're going to show it on pictorials so you could see a piano keyboard which shows the lights, and we're going to discuss what I'm doing for her and how she can get the nodule to disappear all naturally without surgery. Nadia, welcome to Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. When you talk, where do you feel it? Just point to it. When I speak, I feel it right in here. Uh -huh. You went to a doctor. Tell me the story. I went to a doctor because I was hoarse for a while, raspy. Mm -hmm. And she basically told me that I had a nodule, one or two nodules forming on my vocal cords to take some rest, gargle some salt water. And basically, it could go away and maybe not. Maybe we'd have to do s surgery to remove them. Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to go back a month later and I ended up not going because I didn't want to resort to surgery and it didn't get better. Mm -hmm. So basically that's where I'm at now. Did you see other doctors? Um, I was referred to another doctor. They were going to do a laryngoscopy and uh, they were talking about doing laser to remove the nodules mm -hmm. and I've heard just tried not to get surgery done mm -hmm. on the vocal cords so mm -hmm. I haven't gone back. The other doctor said you were hoarse or something? Chronic hoarseness. Mm -hmm. He, he, he um, pretty much told me I had chronic hoarseness and I needed to get take care of it right away. How was he going to take care of it? Through surgery. Mm -hmm. um, why was he doing surgery on a benign growth called a nodule on the vocal cord? He said that the nodule was causing damage to the vocal cords mm -hmm. and that's the only way to get rid of them mm -hmm. was through surgery. Well there's a very natural way if you just change your voice you change your life and your voice comes out. Right. You're talking in the lower throat over here and you should be talking up in the face. I'm going to go through this whole approach so the audience can understand what I'm asking you to do. Okay. You, you've come in as a patient of mine I've seen you once, yes. and we're going to talk about what I told you and what I want you to do. And I have a book called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. It's in the 19th printing. Uh, it was with Harper Collins, and they think it's the best book in the field. Uh, it's in the library, as is another book called Stop Committing Voice Suicide. Where do you feel the, the pressure when you talk? Right now, I, f I feel the pressure in my lower neck area, mm -hmm. right through here. You feel tight? It feels tight. Yeah. What do you do? I am a personal trainer mm -hmm. at a gym, a boot camp gym, mm -hmm. where I use my voice a lot to teach. Mm -hmm. And I'm also an actress where mm -hmm. I have to use my voice in class and mm -hmm. so forth. What did your acting coach tell you oh. about your voice? My acting coach said, you need to take care of your voice because I would go up mm -hmm. to do a scene and hardly any volume would come out. Mm -hmm. And if so, I was cracky or mm -hmm. really raspy, mm -hmm. not very easily mm -hmm. um, understood. Mm -hmm. So he said, if you're going to keep doing this, you need to use your instrument properly and you're mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. What's happening when you are a personal trainer in boot camp? What happens to your voice? I have a mic, but I do a lot of I, yelling, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. I use my voice really loud. Mm -hmm. So it just strains it. So mm -hmm. when I'm done teaching, mm -hmm. I 
my voice is almost gone. You have neck muscles, I felt yesterday when you came in. Yes. Very tight neck. Very tight. Does it hurt? It hurts now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the cover of Stop Committing Voice Suicide, mm -hmm. I gave you a book. Yes. It says the symptoms. Do you remember the symptoms? Hoarseness. Yes. What are the symptoms? You Hoarseness, recall? I think raspy, tight, um, tightness. Feeling of pain in the lower throat. Yes. Uh, throat clearing. Mm -hmm, throat right. clearing. Um, you can't get volume. Exactly. Short, um, feel like I mm -hmm. don't have enough breath. People can't hear you. Exactly. They ask you, what did you say? Mm -hmm. All right, we're showing a voice mirror, which indicates immediately where she's talking, the pitch range. And just tell me about the problems that you have when you're a personal trainer and look at the lights and see where you are. The problems that I'm having is I'm not able to um, talk for very long because mm -hmm. I I'm run out of, running out of breath. Okay, now I want you to hum the first bar of Happy Birthday. <laughs> and where does the light go? The light goes around the A, B, C, D mm -hmm. range. And when you talk, look at where you set it. D F, um, G and below. F, F, E, D, the lower. Yeah. You feel that voice in the lower throat when you're talking normally? Yes. Okay. Now I want you to hum the first bar of Happy Birthday again. <laughs> Where do you feel your voice? Through my nose area. Mm -hmm. Right here in the front mm -hmm. of my mouth. Okay, we're going, to go, we're going to go back in time. I'm going to talk about a voice image in Chapter 4 of Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. I talk about a voice image and voice identity. I wrote about this in The Art and Science of Psychotherapy in 1971. This is the key element, a psychological and emotional attribute as to why people commit voice suicide or get nodules or polyps or contact ulcer or premalignancies, papillomatosis, keratosis, leukoplakia, and why they get a strangled voice. Now, the medical field says a strangled voice is hopeless. They've never had a single cure in 135 years. And they talk, they do surgery, they do Botox, it's the Botox voice. My take on it is they're talking in the lower throat and should be talking up there just like I'm going to have Nadia do for nodules, okay? Okay. Um, hum the first bar again. <laughs> Who told you to lower the pitch of your voice? A client. What was the client's take? She said, uh, you teach a great class, but your voice is kind of high, so it might annoy people. You might want to take it down and make it a little bit deeper. Did you have trouble when you had a higher pitched voice? No, it didn't even seem high pitched to me. Mm -hmm. It just was clear. Clear. Is your voice clear now? No. Okay. When did it change? I would say end of June, July, that time. Sometime this around past there. year? Yes. So it's recent? Yes. And what are you finding when you try to talk in the morning? Is your, is your voice low pitched? It's very low pitched. That's the morning voice? Yeah. And I suggested that you do a lot of humming in the morning to warm right. up your voice. Mm -hmm. A voice tune up. Could you hum the first bar of Happy Birthday? <laughs> go on. <laughs> and where does your voice go? B, C, D, E range. Where do you range. feel it? And right here. Uh -huh. In my nose and in my mouth. That's called the mask. M-A-S-K. Comes from ancient Greek times when actors, actually, the men, talked into a mask. Literally, not figuratively. Because 2,500 years ago in ancient Greek times, women were not allowed on stage. So the, the men imitated the women talking through a real mask. Mm -hmm. That's where all good and great voices are. You're talking in the lower throat. That's where all bad voices are. That's where papillomatosis, people with a pre-malignancy, leukoplakia, keratosis talk. That's where all strangled voices talk. Always all strangled voices talk in the lower throat. It's called spasmodic dysphonia. 
That's the medical take. They believe it's a dystonia, which means that it's hopeless, it's a neurological problem. So they do surgery or they Botox the voice for life, four to ten times a year or more each and every year for life. You have a very simple problem. So do people who have spasmodic dysphonia, papillomatosis, and all these various problems, mm -hmm. naturally. Okay? Okay. All right. I want you to take your finger and put it at the bottom of your breastbone and jiggle it. That's the area. It's the solar plexus. It's the top of the solar plexus, and you jiggle that area very gently, but staccato. That means fast. You want to do that? Yeah. And mm -hmm. how? And where does your voice go? A, B. Mm -hmm. And when you said A, B, where does your voice go? Down, lower. Right. So when you talk, you go lower, but when you hum and use the C spot, that's a discovery I made years ago. It's in my books, and the books are in the library. When you use the C spot, and the C spot is called the Cooper C spot, when you do that, do it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, where does your voice go? Try it again. <coughs> that one was around C, D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you talk, where does your voice go? It goes down to F and G. You're talking at the basal or lower pitch of your voice. Now, you didn't talk that way. No. Can you talk the way you talked six months ago? I don't... I can't remember how it's... You lost the auditory memory span. Yes. In I don't remember what it even That's sounds right. like. That's right. You lost it. What I'm trying to get you to do is feel the voice you had before. Feel it. So I want you to go back and say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again? Mm-hmm. Now just take the mm-hmm and hold the mm. Mm-hmm. And look at the lights and see where they go. B, C. Mm-hmm. Do you feel the buzz in your face? Mm-hmm. That's where I want you to talk throughout the day. And you know how you do that? People love to hear you talk, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you talk on the mm-hmm, so you get the pitch range back where you were before because you lost it. Mm-hmm. Can you say mm-hmm, and then mm -hmm. say mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two, and watch the lights. Mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two. Mm -hmm, three. Yes, you're keeping it up. Yesterday when you were in my office, how did you do it? You said, mm-hmm, one. I did, mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two, mm-hmm, three. And I want you to keep the number up, mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two, mm-hmm, three. And I want you to say, how are you with that voice? How are you? How are you? That's right. Say it again. How are you? Now say it in the old voice. How are you? Yeah. Can you hear the difference? I can hear the difference. I can feel the difference. You can feel the difference. Uh -huh. So we're working on a feely basis. Yeah. If you don't have feeling in your arm, if you don't have feeling, you will be dead very quickly because you will put your arm in an elevator <laughs> uh, door. Do you follow? Yes. If you don't feel it, you don't know where it is. So we operate on feeling, feeling things. Right. Kinesthetic. I'm trying to get you back to feeling where your voice is. Right. Will that, it, once the voice is up higher, mm -hmm. will that take the pressure off? Obviously, it'll take the pressure off the lower throat, but is that what it, what's going to get rid of the nodules? Two things will get rid of the nodule. You ready? Yes. We talked about two things yesterday in my office. Mm -hmm. What was the second item? Um, just wait. Breathing. Diaphragmic breathing. 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 How did you breathe in the office? Put your hand on your midsection. And did your stomach move when you took air in? No, my upper chest did. Okay. That's called upper chest breathing. And it's clavicular breathing. It's the worst type of breathing. Your chest moves up and you your have shoulders. shallow breathing. Right. Your shoulder. Right. You can't get control. The midsection muscles are called diaphragmatic breathing. Diaphragmatic. Diaphragmatic. It means you're using four muscles in the midsection. Four muscles, they're all paired. And when you breathe in, when you breathe in, when you were lying on the couch mm -hmm. in my office, on your back. Exactly. What happened to your midsection? It went out. Right.
But when you talk, what happens to your midsection? It goes in. It's, it's reversed. Yeah, it is reversed. And when I breathe out, it goes out. But it should be going in when I breathe out. Say that again. It should, my breath, my stomach should be going in as I breathe out. When you breathe in, your stomach should go out. Right, but it's, it's going in instead of out. Right, you have it reversed. Right. And you asked me, should you breathe through your nostril when you're talking? Right. And my answer? No. No. You only breathe through your nostril when it's vegetative breathing, when you're, at ra when you're just not talking. And when you're speaking, you take your breath in through the mouth. You have to, otherwise you're sneering. Right. You can't take enough air to support the vocal cords. The vocal cords require air. They float on air. They vib vibrate on air. And if you're reversing the breathing, you're putting tension on the midsection and on the body. When you breathe correctly, Andrew Weil, an MD, wants people to breathe and learn how to breathe. Right. It's in my book change your voice, change your life, and stop committing boy suicide, and another book I have. They're all in the library, and it teaches you how simple it is to breathe right. How long does it take you to breathe right? Right yesterday. now? Yesterday. A long time. Well, it didn't take me to, when you showed me, not long at all. How long did it take? Like a, five seconds. Right. What did I have you do? You had me lie down, mm -hmm. put one hand on my chest, mm -hmm. one hand on my stomach. Right and breathe in? Through your nostrils, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And when you breathe through your nostrils, what happens to your midsection? It goes out. Right. And then I had you breathe through your mouth. Right. And get and the, the same feeling. Mm -hmm. The stomach came out. Right. You follow? Exactly, yes. When you normally talk, your stomach goes in. Exactly, when I breathe out, when I breathe in, my stomach goes in. in. Right. When I breathe out, my stomach goes out, normally. Only when you're, you're on your back Ex when I'm does your down, stomach does go, go out. out. When, you're, when you're sleeping, mm -hmm. you go to what is natural. That's right. nature. Right. You breathe diaphragmatically, and your stomach moves out. But when you arise and then you start talking, you reverse the whole process. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. I love your mm-hmm. Look where your mm-hmm is. Mm -hmm. Your mm-hmm is natural. You can't fake that. Right. Am I making any sense yeah. to you? It just, it's a natural thing I'm not thinking about. Right. So it's just there. Yeah, now say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One. One. Mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, three. Mm-hmm, three. So I want you to talk up in your face and say to me, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? That's great, say it again. Hello, how are you? You say it even higher. Hello, how are you? Right. Did you have that voice before you had this problem? It was sounded something like that, I'm sure. Like I said, I forget what it sounds <laughs> and now like. Now you're dropping clear. down with it. The voice is raspy and hoarse. Yes. Right. So somebody told you, somebody told you to lower the pitch of your voice because why? Because it was really loud when I was teaching. Yes. So instead of cutting the volume when you were loud, you brought the pitch range down. Right. And you went into the lower throat. You could have been loud up here and just cut the volume up there. Do you follow? Yes. But you didn't know, and that's the problem. People don't know, and you make a misstep. You're, wrong, you, you're walking the wrong plank. Right. And then I just, I started pushing through my stomach and going down. Right. Six months ago, your mm -hmm. voice began to disintegrate. Yeah. That's called voice suicide. Okay. Now, you have a relative who has a condition called papillomatosis. Mm -hmm. Papillomatosis is a pre-malignancy on the vocal cords. The medical community has never had a single cure of this condition that I know of. Right. How many surgeries has he had on his vocal cords? At least seven or eight. Mm -hmm. Does it help? No. Okay. That's the commentary on the medical treatment of papillomatosis. And papillomatosis um, is based on the belief, 
after the surgery. That Ullman, in 1923, did a study of 10 cases, and he said it's due to a virus. That's in 1923. Mm -hmm. I did a study at UCLA Medical Center under medical supervision for a dissertation. And I found that papillomatosis responds to what is called direct voice rehabilitation by changing the voice from the lower throat to the face. Ullman was wrong in one respect. He's saying the virus is the cause of the papillomatosis. It may be in some cases, but I found that papillomatosis is due to the fact that the individuals are talking in the lower throat. Now, there are cases such as children who have papillomatosis when they're very young. That's another condition, another situation. Mm -hmm. But I found that most people who have this condition are talking deep throat exactly as you have and do and that when you continue to do that, you can not only get a nodule or a polyp or contact ulcer, these mm -hmm. are benign, but you can get papillomatosis, a pre-malignancy, get leukoplakia and keratosis. These are big terms, but it's very important because the individuals, like your relative, doesn't get his voice back, he tries surgery. But right. he's never tried direct voice rehabilitation, which is the only approach in the world reporting cures of this condition. That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> and there's another condition that what I do is the only report of cures of strangled voices. They talk like this, I can't talk. It's an unspeakable voice. It's a voice that the medical community believes is hopeless. Right. And I'm reporting cures of this condition for 35 years. The study I talked about spasmodic dysphonia was mm -hmm. published in the International Association of Logopedics in 1980, peer-reviewed. So the field knows I have cures and they're peer-reviewed. I also have publication of papillomatosis in 1971 in the Journal of Speech and Hearing Disorders that's peer-reviewed, right. indicating that this condition is related to wrong voice use, misuse and is curable. So I've moved it from nodules, which are very commonplace in our society mm -hmm. because our culture is saying talk in the lower throat. Right. Somebody told you to talk in the lower throat. Right. Six months and you can hardly talk. Exactly, and my voice, people that know me obviously don't recognize my voice now. Mm -hmm. People that meet me think this is just my voice, but it's not. Do they think it's sultry and sexy? Yeah, somebody, some people will tell me, oh, I like your voice that way, mm -hmm. you know, but I thought that was your voice. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt when you use this voice? It does hurt. It starts to get a, really tight, mm -hmm. and sometimes a, it, it's a pain of, like, uh, more sore, like the muscles are too mm -hmm. tight. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm feeling. Does it bother you? It bothers me. Does it hurt you? It hurts a little. Do you feel a tension in your lower yeah. throat? Yeah. You're using the lower throat, which is the one place nature will not allow you to talk. You have to put your voice up in the face. All good and great voices are in the face with a marked degree of nasal resonance. Robert West, one of the founders of the American Speech Language Hearing Association said, all good and great voices have a marked degree of nasal resonance. And he's right on the button, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. A fellow by the name of Ollie Williamson in 1945, a professor, did a study of 69, uh, 72 cases of horse voice. 69 of those horse voices became normal when he raised the pitch. Wow. I'm going to ask you to raise the pitch, but I want you to do it by just humming the first bar of happy birthday. <laughs> Good. Now, I want you to put your hand on your midsection as you hum it and tell me what happens with your midsection as you just hum. It Does goes it go in? in? Goes in. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're not talking. Now, I want you to count to ten and tell me what happens with your midsection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right now, it's going in. It's going in as you're counting? Right now, yeah. Because I'm. I think I'm aware now. You're aware now. Did it happen that way yesterday before no. you know? It, it either didn't move mm -hmm. or it went out. So you're beginning to know in one session with me 
what to do. Yeah, it's a little difficult at times only mm. because I'm in my head mm -hmm. and this is something that's so automatic mm -hmm. but when you put thought behind it, mm -hmm. it makes it hard because you're like, okay, am I breathing right and then I'm talking and then I'm mm -hmm. breathing out. Wait, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be breathing out but I'm speaking and I'm out of breath. So here's the way you do it. Throughout the day, people love to hear you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that validates what they're saying, that you're listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it puts your voice right up in the face. You got it? Got it. And they say you're very personable, very sociable, very friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they like you. Meanwhile, you're practicing on your voice with them, and they don't know it. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. I developed that technique. And it does wonders for people. It's based on the Freshel's technique. A great ear, nose, and throat doctor who had the chewing approach. Mm -hmm. And it put your voice up in the face. But it's very difficult to carry it over practically when you're talking with people because they become offended when you go, mm -hmm, and you're talking on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Emil Freshel's in 1943, I, I, I used his quote in a textbook I wrote said that it's not practical, people don't like to do it. He was a very fine and wonderful person. I just developed his technique and used the mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm one. Mm-hmm one. Watch the one, mm-hmm mm -hmm one. Mm-hmm one. Don't drop it, keep it, mm-hmm one. Mm-hmm one. Mm-hmm two. Mm-hmm two. Mm-hmm three. Mm-hmm three. Does it take the pressure off the lower throat? Yes, okay. it takes it off. Yeah, and you can't transfer it yet to speech. It I takes it off, you said, it's lower throat. Yes. So I want, mm -hmm. does it take the pressure off your lower throat? Put it up in your face. It takes the pressure off, but it's, it's, uh, it doesn't come naturally. I have to. Yeah. I want you to hum the first bar, bar of happy birthday. <laughs> That's what I want you to do all day long when you're by yourself, and I want you in public, mm hmm, mm hmm, and talk off there. I'm Ort Cooper. Change your voice, change your life. If you have nodules, polyp, contact ulcers, you have premalignancies, you have the strangled voice, put your voice up in your face, you change your voice, you change your life. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye bye.